this is an accommodation, um, a two person uh, bedroom apartment uh, where I was supposed to share it with a friend of mine, but we had another guy, a friend of ours crash in um, halfway through and we've been living as a three guy for two months now. This place is um, my house. I live with two other people. When I first walk in through the door, I see the living room and all I can think is vile, uh, grossed out, messy, garbage dump. Our fridge only has Pepsi cans and a few bottles of alcohol and maybe leftovers from KFC. In my fridge currently, there are 43 cans of Pepsi can Coke um, that I have been stocking up for myself. He just drinks like 10 cans a day. Yeah. He goes to Costco every day to just buy like a 24 pack back home. I do my dishes relatively often now. Um, I admit I was quite lazy into doing my dishes a couple of months back, but recently uh, I've started being more proactive in washing all the dish that I use. I don't really do the dishes since I just do takeaways and there's no reason for me to do it. My dining area is just a really small table and it's always filled with stuff on it from the third person again. Just empty plastic bags and leftover un unwashed dishes and stuff. So we don't really have a dining table. The last time we cleaned the living room was probably a month ago. I was, really, I was really busy with assignments, but the third person came and he made the room messy, so it's not my fault. That's bullshit. So that was my portrait interview video, uh, Three Guys, One House. <laughs> the title is a play on a certain shock video that went around the internet quite a few years back. Um, and it's just meant to kind of highlight about how messy guys are in university and what it's like to live with them if they're unsupervised by any maternal figure to clean up after their shit. Yeah, so mainly it was just them kind of describing how their place came to be as it is um, and why it's such a shithole and what it looks like and stuff, just to kind of describing it overall um, and always trying to, you know, not pin the blame on themselves for the sorry state that the house is in. So yeah, it's, you know, more of a joke video rather than like an actual, like proper piece of uh, video portrait, um, you know, just kind of like to highlight and entertain the audience about guys living together. And I think I managed to achieve that relatively well. Um, and here comes up the reflection part of my vlog. Okay, reflecting back on the interview portrait thing. Um, what did I find to be the one most successful aspect and the one most problematic aspect of the overall project? As for the most successful one, I think it's got to be either the graphic or the editing um, because I think the graphics were relatively well done. Um, you know, they're pretty simple to make. Um, they add a bit of touch of like that, you know, interview kind of aesthetic. Um, and they, you know, add like these little like inner characteristics um, for the audience to have more knowledge about the interviewees. Um, and, you know, it's a pretty satirical take. So I think it does it relatively well. Or the editing. Um, I think, you know, it was very minor editing. Um, but the part where I made the third guest um, anonymous uh, through using conventions of like a pixelated face as well as um, a like lower voice. Um, through shifting the pitch. I think that did that relatively well uh, overall following those general conventions. The most problematic part was most definitely the grain, I think. Unfortunately, I do not own any studio lights and didn't know if I could get them or not. I uh, didn't bother trying, wouldn't be honest. Um, and so the lighting was pretty abysmal and on camera it was relatively dark, even though the aperture was cranked up like till it was like extremely large, right? The largest it could be on my camera. Yeah, the other solution to fixing the amount of grain in the video was either um, adjusting the shutter speed, uh, but, you know, I was feeling a bit lazy, uh, so instead I just cranked up the ISO, and so that does allow more light uh, to, to be visualized within the camera. However, it does add quite a bit of grain to, to the scene, 
So I should have played around with the shutter speed a lot more uh, in order to, to get what I wanted, essentially. And if I were to do something different, it would have most definitely been just, you know, actually do something with the shutter speed instead of just cranking up the ISO or spend hella money on getting studio lights. A key learning discovery that I made was how important it was to thoroughly think through questions before doing the interview. I had quite a few questions I asked at the interview, but they weren't leading enough in order to get a short, concise answer out of the interviewees. Um, and so I had to cut them out of the final project due to time constraints. So a lot of the long-winded answers were cut out from the final project in favor of the short ones, just kind of describing about what it's like to live in a share house with three guys going to university. It's like the reading in week 10 about directing documentaries by Michael Rubiger, uh, talking about focusing questions. I had questions which casted a big net, um, which I shouldn't have and got a whole lot of nothing out of those questions. Instead, I should have done more concise and specific questions in order to get shorter answers out of them. One thing I learned from this whole production process was the importance of shooting in the right environment. Um, again, before, as I said about the lighting and stuff, it didn't work out well in my favor, uh, ended up with a lot of grain and I could have adjusted settings to reduce it, but overall I would have liked, you know, a more premium location in order to uh, shoot so that I could have like less grain, specific lighting, however I wanted, you know, maybe some Rembrandt or something like that. Uh, just, just to have a, a proper studio setting in which I could control the environment exactly how I wanted it. If I were doing a film about found footage or amateur filming, then grain does add to the connotations um, and follows conventions, but it's not exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to make a semi-professional uh, look, which had, you know, satirical undertones, but I couldn't get the, you know, professional look that I really wanted um, with all the grain in the footage. Uh, so, you know, next time I really want to be able to do something about that. Yeah, and it matters a lot because it looks hella ugly and it just doesn't fit with the narrative which I wanted to film.